Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this review, we are looking at the Marvel Select Apocalypse and this is being reviewed for two reasons. One, uh, three reasons. One, you guys asked for it. I know it's been a little while since he came out, but I've had a lot of people ask me to review it. So that's the main reason. The second reason is uh, one of their marketing guys contacted me and said, hey, do you have anything? Do we have anything that you'd like to review? And I said, well, <laughs> this one would be nice. And they sent me a bunch of stuff actually that I'll be reviewing. I did tell him very, very clearly I don't collect this line. I only collect the big characters where I can kind of fudge the scaling. And uh, I'm going to be completely brutally honest in my reviews like I always am. So don't send review samples if that's not okay with you. They said that's perfectly fine and sent the review samples. So we have that. And then the third reason I'm reviewing it is it's my job. Okay, so it's a pretty good figure. I know a lot of you guys really like this. There are some serious things that hold me back from liking it too much. And we're going to talk about all of that. Some of it's subjective. Some of it is objective. All right, so let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is just take a quick look at my package. They do still have that classic Marvel Select packaging, which is just a giant old school action figure package, which I love. Uh, they are big though, and the figures are heavy, and they tend to get beat up a lot. Uh, this one's pretty badly beat up, so I don't know if people are displaying these big ass packages, but it does take me back to a better time in collecting to see a card with a blister in this whole, this whole setup. We don't see that too much these days so i do like the packaging uh it is huge though okay let me get that out of the way and we can get into the meat and taters now let's start with a height measurement this guy stands about 24 centimeters that's going to be roughly uh, about nine and a half inches here he is up against a marvel legends oh hey don't do that marvel legends darwin of course, the scaling doesn't really matter with Apocalypse because he has the uh, ability of changing his size. So that's fine. So this guy's easy to fit into your Marvel Legends collection, no problem at all. If you don't collect Marvel Select, you like the way this looks, you could easily chuck it in with your Marvel Legends and be happy about that. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with a question of the day. I know most people were talking about this guy in a very positive light when he released. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it looks good? Do you not think it looks good? I think part of it looks really good, but there are things that hold it back for me. Let's start with the negative and then we can finish on a more positive note. The first thing that bothers me about this guy is the head. I do not like the head sculpt at all. Not even a little bit. It's well enough executed on a technical front, but to me that doesn't look anything like Apocalypse. I have been quite fond of the character of Apocalypse for quite some time. I'm not an expert on him, but I am not familiar with any version of him where he has narrow eyes and a big nose. His eyes are usually fairly broad, his nose is usually fairly small, and then he has the big jawline and big mouth. And I know sometimes he's more exaggerated, sometimes he's more human looking, but I've never seen a single one where he looks like this. The big nose and tiny narrow eyes, the eyes aren't tiny, but they're narrow, it throws off his look way too much for me. Not a fan of the face. That's the biggest thing that bothers me. It is well executed. You can see like the line work and uh, he's kind of cross-eyed just a touch, but otherwise it's pretty darn well executed. So I'll give him that, but not the look for me. I don't love that head sculpt. Then the other thing that really bugged me about this guy was the tubular nature of his lower legs. They gave him these big fat ankles, which help him to pose, uh, but he has kind of small feet, but really tubular fat legs with no calf shape at all just tubes i don't care for that look don't care for that look those are the two big things that really bothered me they sound maybe inconsequential for the legs but for me the head was a big deal and i do think the head's probably a little bit too big for this version of apocalypse he usually has a smaller head it looks weird there's a lot of weirdness going on for proportions for me also though that's not a huge deal it was mainly those two other things then the last thing is the flat finish Normally I love it and I kind of still do here. I don't know how I feel about it for Apocalypse. I see him as being mostly metallic. They do have a lot of that going on here. So let's do another question of the day. How do you guys like the flat finish for his main suit parts? I think it's fine. It's just not what I was expecting when they first announced it. So I'm, I'm torn about that. Okay, but let's go ahead and get into the good stuff. The paintwork is pretty good. There's more paint on this than probably a whole wave of Marvel Legends. They did a really nice job. We have the two tones of blue 
well, if you count all of them, there's like five tones of blue, but there is a nice variety in his main suit. Silver parts are well done with a nice black wash. Looks pretty good everywhere, even on the gloves, they have the two different finishes, two different tones. It's nice. It's nice to see an action figure with paint on it. Uh, that's one of the things I like most about Marvel Selects is they still feel like action figures that the people designing them cared about. They actually wanted to make them rather than they're just trying to get as many out as they can. So I do like that. Uh, it looks pretty good overall. Uh, the tubers are nicely done. The silver is nice and silver. Uh, we'll get to them more when we get to the articulation, but they look good like this. I'll, I'll say that. Oh, and then the last thing that bothers me about this guy is his musculature is really soft and kind of weird. His arms don't have any real definition to him, not much at least. And his quads are very strangely shaped. So yeah, it's just not a perfect figure, not by any stretch. But those things that I mentioned, of those, the only one that is really a problem for me would be the head sculpt. So if you don't care about that, then you're gonna enjoy the way this looks, and I still do. In fact, I think this would probably be my favorite Apocalypse figure short of the old Build-A-Figure one, the old one, the big one. Uh, it still has that classic Apocalypse look, and I can look past some of those issues, but that's why I haven't been into the figure as much as many people are. Uh, and why I didn't review it until I got a review sample. I just couldn't get past the head. But having it in hand, I don't hate it as much as I thought I would for the head sculpt. So yeah, it looks pretty good. I'll give the aesthetic an overall 7 out of 10. It's not blowing me away, but it's definitely good enough. What they do with paint helps a lot. Speaking of helping a lot, accessories on this guy are pretty darn good. You do get the two relaxed hands that come on him in the package. You get two fist hands. That's nice. But then you also get his pincher poker of doom. That's pretty cool. You get the drill of happiness, so that's pretty cool. And then lastly, you get his spike ball of spikiness. And those are nice. I don't know. It seems odd to me that the spike ball is a different color. I guess the mechanical things, I don't know. I never paid that much attention to the color of his, his things. But either way, it's a nice spread of accessories. I like that. Again, Marvel Select making figures that actually feel like collectibles and toys at the same time. I'm very pleased about that. So accessory wise, uh, nine out of 10, not a whole lot more you really need for Apocalypse other than maybe um, more attachments, I guess, but that's still good. Okay, now articulation, usually not the strong suit for these figures. Let's see how it goes. The head is on a ball peg and he does have that big collar, but given the confines of that collar and his probably too big head, it does move around nicely. So. You should be able to get him into a decent pose and have him looking okay on a shelf. That should be fine. He can look down enough that it makes sense. So I like it. All right, for the shoulders, let's see. All right, so yeah, this is what I was gonna say. These tubers, they're very sculpted, clearly, and they're fairly hard PVC, like not soft really at all. If they weren't thin, they wouldn't be soft. They are very, very stiff. So as soon as you move the arm, they pop off and they don't really have any uh, retention in the pegs. So that's a problem. You're not gonna be able to pose this guy very well without heating these up. And even then it may not work out. So be aware, his tubers are not great for posing. The other problem is they don't rotate here. This is a fixed connection. So it just has to flex and there's no way that's happening. So that's a gross oversight if you ask me. Not cool. All right, but let's see what the shoulders can do, even though you might not want to do it. Uh, that's about as far as you're getting the arm without heating anything or doing anything crazy, so that's not bad. Let's see about rotation. It looks like you're gonna get full rotation. This is hard plastic. They're not giving you any extra posability up there. Uh, bicep swivel is there, that's fine. Single jointed elbow, you're gonna get your bend. Uh, just shy of 90, you could probably squeeze out just a touch more than that, and you're gonna get more rotation out of that if you want it. So that's okay. The wrists, or I should say the gauntlets, do rotate. If you, that helps you with posing, that's good, but just not, not much is gonna help with these guys being the way they are, so that kind of blows. Wrists do have a swivel and a hinge, so that's okay. Hinge is kind of stiff, but it'll work. All right, for the, oh, this one popped off and I wasn't even doing anything. Okay, for the torso, he leans forward well enough. That's all right. Leaning backwards, he doesn't go very far. And the way they sculpted his chest, he looks very slumped over if you don't put his torso pretty far back. Like that's basically straight up and down. Otherwise, the way they sculpted his pecs and placed everything, he looks kind of crunched forward. So you're gonna wanna lean him back mostly. 
but it does do that. Side to side is okay, rotation is fine, that's all right. Waist twist, is there one? It looks like there is. If there is, mine doesn't wanna do it. It really doesn't feel like it's gonna go, but it looks like it should, so that's weird. You guys can let me know if yours has a waist twist. All right, for the hips, I have to say that cutouts are huge, so I would expect a lot of range. There's a lot of gappage. He's got a very big diaper area, let's see. Yeah, he can kick pretty much horizontal, that's good. Going back, not too much. Out to the side, I would expect this. Yeah, full on splits. So they've made huge cutouts, which isn't the best looking thing, but if you want your apocalypse to kick forward and do the splits, he can do it. Thigh swivel, maybe not as well hidden as it could be, but it is there, so you get that. And then for the knee, it's a single jointed knee, limited range, nothing crazy going on there. Uh, it will rotate if you want it to. Don't know why you would, but it does do that. And then, unfortunately, unlike the arms, the boots do not rotate. You're just rotating the whole lower leg. But for the ankle, you get decent range going back, decent range going forward, and it is a ball hinge, so you can give him a proper ankle rocker. It's a giant ball hinge, so it's weird looking, but it does function. So, it's, for the articulation on this guy, it's certainly not his strongest feature. Uh, will he pose? Yes. Will you have trouble posing him and keeping the tubers in? Most definitely. But is he going to pose enough for Apocalypse? I think the answer to that is probably. I don't think Apocalypse needs to be doing anything crazy. And this guy most definitely cannot do too many crazy things. I'll give it a seven. Articulation is going to be a seven. Uh, I'll knock it down to a six if you want to include the tubers disconnecting as part of the articulation rating, which you probably should. All right, okay, so now it's time for the final verdict. My notes on this guy. We don't have a lot in the way of Apocalypse figures, so in that sense, I like it, and I'm glad to have it in my collection. It looks definitely good enough, but not having a lot to compare against does not make a figure objectively good on its own. So I'm a little reluctant to say that this is an exceptionally good figure. I would say it is definitely good enough. If it had a stellar head sculpt, I could look past a lot of the other flaws, but for me, it's somewhat subjective that I don't like the head, but it's also somewhat objective because he just doesn't look like that in anything I could find or anything I could remember. So you guys can let me know what you think about that, but I'm, I tend to, the more I have it in hand, the more I'm holding it, the more I like it. But objectively, it's just, I wanna say it's just average. Accessories do save it, paint saves it some. I'm just gonna give it a seven. Overall rating of seven. There's some good stuff here for sure. Some not so good stuff here for sure. I think a seven is a fair enough rating. You're definitely getting your money's worth objectively, but uh, the problems are there. So be aware of that. I think that's the best way to put it. So there it is guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you should. Normally I have new videos every day, but Wednesday right now I'm doing the renovation for my collection room and everything. So. I'm definitely not doing every day right now, but I will again soon. And in the meantime, I do have thousands of videos already on the channel, so you can come back for all of that. And in the other meantime, keep collecting.